So I'm often asked to slow these videos down a little bit. I, I tend to upload a lot of shorts and people have a lot of questions. So here's another piece I'm working on in a bit of a longer format. So unfortunately, I already had this started when I remembered to turn on the camera. But as you can see, I'm building this one in two pieces. And you'll see down the middle, each side has a piece of framing on it. That's just temporary framing. Um, I just really wanted a sharp point down the middle. And I, I could have built this in one piece and then cut it at the end down the middle. It would have been a lot easier. But that gets a little dicey and I just <laughs> thought I'd try it this way on this piece. So as you can see, I am working with some greens. That is what the client picked. And this is called Pewter Green from Sherwin-Williams. It's one of the 2023 colors of the year they have listed. And the white, that's also by Sherwin-Williams. That's called Extra White. And then kind of that grayish black you see, this is my actual favorite color by Sherwin-Williams. It is their Iron Ore. It's kind of like a chocolate, or not a chocolatey, it's like a charcoal charcoal black uh, and it goes with absolutely anything I build with and it's in a lot of homes these days so you know it helps the artwork um, match some of these more modern interiors. The stain you see I'm using is um, is early American. I probably have four to five in my arsenal I use consistently and this is one of them. I've answered this question in some of my other videos but the backer board is called OSB and it's about a half inch thick. And on these pieces, I could have used plywood as well, but the bigger the pieces get, I will always move over to OSB because it does not warp as much as um, the plain plywood does. The bigger the piece, they seem to come off the wall a little bit, especially if they're exposed to sun. Now, as you can see, I am using all wood that's been painted already. I know people have a lot of different methods on this, but I don't draw out or plan out my pieces in advance. Each piece, it just kind of comes together as, as I go, kind of go with the flow type of person. So I do like to paint my wood in advance so I can see the pattern kind of come to life. Uh, that being said, you're gonna see me do some touch-ups as I go, especially with the white paint. And speaking of white paint, if you're using that on cedar especially, make sure that you uh, either prime it first or use a paint that has a primer built in or a stain blocker so those tannins don't lift and you have a true white. As far as the wood glue I'm using, I believe this time I'm using tight bond, but I'm not particular, I'll use anything. And then I'm using two types of nails. So I do both glue and nail down the art. So on the thicker pieces, the thick th cedar, I will typically use a brad nailer. And then on the thinner pieces like this lath here, I use a pin nailer. I'm also asked how long it takes me to build one of these, and that's really hard to gauge because I do a lot of prep up front. I'll prep probably a month's worth of wood and that will take me a week to two weeks. Uh, then I'll come in and paint and stain everything and then I really get to work. So assuming everything's done up front and I start this piece, it will take me about a week because I only work on it a little bit of a time um, because this is kind of a side creative hobby for me. I do have a full-time job, which is kind of nice. I can get all these pieces laid out during a lunch break, let it dry, come back the next day and poke at it some more. It's really a good stress reliever for me. All right, so this is all done and I'm going to now detach those middle pieces. Uh, they're just there temporarily to make sure everything lined up. And then I'll pull out any nails. I obviously didn't glue those on. Okay, so kind of hold my breath and hope those fit together nicely. It looks like they will. So now I'm taping up the edges because I don't want any little bits to fall off on the table saw. I did glue and nail, but it's extra insurance when a piece is sensitive like this and it has to be exact because there's two of them. I'm sorry for the side angle here. Um, you can see I put a jig on my table saw to help the trimming. So if they're smaller pieces, I will run this on the table saw. If it was larger, um, a big piece of art, I'd probably use a track saw. Okay, looks like it's fitting together. So I'll go ahead and take off that tape. And I always hold my breath and make sure everything's still there, <laughs> which it is on this one. It's coming together nicely. Very little issues on this one. So after I do this, I will typically um, 
give it a blow off. I'll turn it over and I always sand the edges on the back so that you know, it's not rough after I frame it. It's just easier to do it up front. And if I've accidentally poked any nails through the back at this point in time, I would grab my grinder and just grind those off. So it's looking like this is putting together very nicely. Don't have any issues. So now it's time to do all the final touch-ups. And here I spend a lot of time and just make sure everything looks really nice because once it's framed, it's just more difficult. All right, next up, I'm just going to give this a good spray and seal it. And you can see it looks a little wet, but it will dry kind of with a matte finish. And then I'll just put a frame on it with that early American. And this is how they turned out. I love them, they're beautiful. And then I'm gonna show you a couple stage pictures. Here's a side picture of all the texture in them. And then here's how it would look in some room. Thanks everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video.